welcome to this lecture on the course of computer aided power system analysis so far we have been discussing this line outage power flow method now in the last lecture we have uh, seen that uh, that how the change in the current flow over an existing line can be can, can be actually computed if some other line is uh, outaged but now as we have already uh, discussed at the starting when we have actually started discussing about this sensitivity factors what we actually want that what would be the change in real power flow uh, uh, over any line if some other line is gone so now today we would be looking at that how can we calculate the change in real power flow over an existing line if some other line is outaged so for that let us um, look at our um, last expression so this is the last expression we have um, obtained in the last class so here uh, i p so here uh, basically p q is the line which is existing line in this uh, in this circuit m n is the line between bus m and n which has been outaged and z b and z c these are all the impedance of the individual lines and we have already very much uh, we have actually a uh, stressed at this point and the other elements are nothing but the element of the bus impedance matrix now we as we already know that we can calculate the bus impedance matrix from the knowledge of the bus admittance matrix so then therefore all these quantities at the right hand side are essentially basically dependent on the line parameters so which are already known so then therefore this particular ratio is actually a constant quantity now here obviously for obvious reason uh, we can see that as all these impedance are essentially a complex quantity so then therefore this ratio would be essentially a complex quantity but then here what we are talking about we are talking about the change in the line power flow, uh, uh, change in the i mean line current flow so then so then obviously we are probably saying here that that what would be the change in the line current flow over the line between buses p and q that is essentially the complex current over the line between bus p and q due to due to the outage of the line between bus m and n now what we do is we now apply the assumptions of the dc load flow we have already discussed what is meant by dc load flow so in that dc load flow we said that we uh, take the assumptions that all the bus voltages are equal to 1.0 per unit all the bus voltage angles are approximately equal to 0 they are not exactly equal to 0 but they are very close to equal to 0 for example let's say 1 degree 2 degree 4 degree 5 degree or even let's say minus 1 degree minus 2 degree minus 5 degree etc so then therefore they are reasonably close to 0 so then therefore theta i minus theta j also would be reasonably close to 0 this is an assumption and we also neglect all resistances of the lines so if i now apply these assumptions then what we get is as follows so now what we are trying to do is under dc load flow assumptions now suppose i do have a bus i and bus j so it is bus i bus j so you are now doing all the calculations under dc load flow assumption so i do have on bus i and bus j and between bus i and bus j there is a line and because we are neglecting all the resistances so then obviously this line would be represented by uh, inductance only so let's say this is jx and um, this is vi angle let us say theta i and this is v j angle theta j. So, we know that p i j is actually v i v j by x sin I mean we should use a capital X here that is the standard notation we use. So, we should use capital X actually. 
so capital X capital X so theta i minus theta j. Now, we have already assumed that v i and v j is equal to 1 and theta i minus theta j is almost equal to 0. So, as uh, so then therefore, it turns out to be theta i minus theta j by x as uh, according to assumptions v i is equal to v j is equal to 1 and sin theta i minus theta j is almost is equal to theta i minus theta j. This is due to the due to our assumptions that theta i minus theta j is almost equal to 0. So, under D C low flow equation this is the expression of P i j. Now, on in this if I now calculate what is the current i i j. So, now what is expression of current current flow this is of, of course, v i angle theta i minus v j angle theta j by j x. So, it is with v i cos theta i minus v j cos theta j plus j v i sin theta i minus v j sin theta j by j x. Now, here again we apply that v i is equal to v j is equal to 1. So, v i is equal to v j is equal to 1. Now, theta i and theta j is almost equal to 0. So, therefore, cos theta i is equal to, to cos theta j also is equal to 1. So, then therefore, this term vanishes and here this j, this j cancels out and v i this is 1, this is 1 and sin theta i is almost equal to theta i and sin theta j is almost equal to theta j. So, then so then therefore, this also turns out to be theta i minus theta j by x. Here what we are doing here is basically as uh, cos theta i is almost equal to 1 and sin theta i is almost theta i and cos theta j is also almost equal to 1 because theta i and theta j they are equal to 0 and sin theta j is almost equal to theta j sorry this should be i this should be i. So, this should be i. So, then therefore, what you can see now? So, from this expression and this expression, we can see that under DC load flow assumptions, the expression of Pij and Iij are just the same. So, we note that we write that under DC load flow assumption, expression of P i j and i i j are the same. So, then therefore, now if I now apply DC load flow assumptions in this expression. So, then what will happen? all these z's that is all these impedances would be replaced by their corresponding reactances. Delta i p q would be replaced by delta p p q and i m n 0 would be replaced by p m n 0, because the expression of i p q and expression of p p q would be the same expression of i m n would be equal to the expression of p p n and here under the DC load flow assumptions you would be actually neglecting the resistances. So, then therefore, everything would be replaced by their corresponding imaginary value. So, then therefore, we can write down under DC load flow assumptions and which we are writing. So, then therefore, we say that under DC load flow assumption, we 
we can write delta p p q by p m n 0 would be equal to x b by x c into z p n minus z p m. So, it is it would be x p n minus x p m minus x q n minus x q m x q n minus x q m and this is x three time uh, theven in m n minus x b. So, we say that x theven in m n minus x b. Again we note that this, this and this they are they are uh, reactances of they are reactances of individual line and this, 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 this and this, these are element of the let us say B dash, we have already seen it, B dash inverse matrix. So, now here we have got one complete expression, so where it is only dependent upon the line parameter. So, this expression, this expression is called, so this expression is give, this expression inside this box it is the line outage sensitivity factor for a single contingency. So, we have obtained that what is the, so again we can see that this line outage sensitivity factor can be computed very easily uh, if we just know the line parameters of the system. So, then therefore, these outage factors can be computed a priori and they can be stored in the computer memory. So, then therefore, whenever any line is outaged or rather whenever you would like to simulate that what would be the effect of this outage of this line on the other existing lines. So, we can simply take that what is the value of the um, existing power flow over the line which is which is to be outaged and then simply multiply that existing power flow with this corresponding sensitivity factor to arrive at the change in the power flow over any other line. So, obviously, from here if I know this I mean delta p q, so then therefore, we know that this p q, so then from here also, uh, from here also we can say that p p q nu would be of course, it would be p p q old plus delta p p q. So, then therefore, once we calculate this value by utilizing this LOSFs, after that we can very easily calculate that what would be the value of new p p q. Now, let us see that what would be that what is the effectiveness of this method, I mean does this method give lot of error or what is the error. So, for that um, now, let us look at an IEEE 14 bus system, we have already uh, shared that what are the data of this. Now, what we are now doing, now we are now here showing the results corresponding to outage of two lines, one is line number 18 and what is line number 2, what is line number 2 and 18 would be available in the circuit diagram as well as the from the data. Now, um, this is the original power flow in this p line or e is the original power flow over all these lines line number 1 to 20. And this is the corresponding uh, LSOF actually it should be LO, LO is line outage sensitivity factor it should be LOSF and these are the corresponding values. Now, 
<coughs> P18. Now, we are here talking about that this outage of line number 18 and from this column we can see that I mean, line number 18 has got an um, 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 pre-outage power level is equal to minus point uh, minus point 0.0777, so I mean, this is the value. So, when I uh, multiply this with this and then add with the original, so now after that what we do is simply now multiply this into this, so then we get this delta p q 1 and then we add it with the to the original value, after that we get this new calculated values of the lines, new calculated values of the power flow over the existing lines because of the outage of line number 18. Here if we just note that here we have shown it dash because this particular line is outage, so then obviously there is no sense to calculate the new power flow over this line, so we have not calculated. So now this is the estimated value of new power flow over the existing lines obtained by the method of line outage sensitivity factor. And then complete AC power flow analysis has been carried out in which line number 18 has been removed from the data file. So, then therefore, one complete load flow analysis has been carried out in which there are all 14 buses, all loads are there, everything is fine, I mean all generation pattern, all loads, everything is there. Only thing is that now instead of having 20 lines in the data file. Now, we will we are only having 19 lines where, uh, where this particular line number 18 has been removed from the data file and from that and so, so then after doing this load flow we have got this new power flow over the lines, right. So, after we do the load flow by removing by, uh, by removing line number 18 from the data file we, we get this power flow over the lines. So, we can see that these values are reasonably close to each other, reasonably close, all these values are reasonably close to each other. So, then therefore, there is not really much of an error or rather these errors are acceptable errors for the purpose of engineering, these are acceptable. So, then this method give us a reasonably good amount of uh, or rather a reasonably accurate estimation. Similarly, uh, when we are Similarly, also another experiment has been done when line number 2 has been outaged. So, you can see that for line number 2, the original power flow is 0 0.7464, so this is the 0 0.7464. So, this is the original uh, power flow and this is the LOS, uh, again this is the LOSF. Now, please note that when we are changing the uh, line to be outage, so then obviously the corresponding LOSF values also would be changed, so then so then therefore these LOSF values would not be equal to these LOSF values. So, we have got these LOSF values, so we have got this original power flow, so then from that we calculate the what is the change in the power flow over in existing lines, so we get this calculated values obtained by the method of LOSF. And then we have also done the load flow analysis of the system by now removing line number 2, but now when we are removing line number 2, we have actually also reinstated line number 18 in the data file. So, here also in this case we have done the AC load flow for um, 19 lines or rather uh, done the AC load flow of this entire system having only 19 lines in the system. So, now we have got two values that this is the most accurate values at the um, uh, last column, this is the most accurate value and at the last but one column, this is the value of the uh, power flow obtained uh, by using this LOSF uh, approach. Again, we can see that these two quantities are quite close to each other. So, then therefore, this method also gives us a reasonably good uh, estimate of the uh, new power flow over all the existing lines when a particular line is outaged. So, from this analysis, so we can see that this line outage, so then uh, basically uh, by this, this uh, line outage sensitivity factors as well as this generator outage sensitivity factors, they to give us a reasonable amount uh, or rather uh, reasonable 
confidence in the estimated values because we have done through experiment we I mean we have already shown that through computer simulation that the values obtained by utilizing this uh, methods that this outage sensitivity factors they are pretty close to the values which are obtained by utilizing actual AC power flow method. So, this completes our discussion of the uh, contingency analysis. So, now we would uh, like to discuss, now we would now like to start discussion about our state estimation method. So, so now we start our discussion about, so now we start uh, our new method or rather new topic state estimation technique. Now, what is state estimation method and why it, it is necessary? So, this introduction we would like to discuss in this lecture. Now, to appreciate the necessity of this state estimation method, let us again revisit the basic concept of power flow analysis. So, in power flow analysis, what we do? In power flow analysis, what we do? We have certain inputs and we do calculate certain outputs. Now, what are the inputs? Inputs are V i theta i at the slack bus at the slack bus and then P i V i at the P V bus and P i Q i at the P Q bus. Right. So, these are the input quantities and what are the outputs? Outputs are essentially V i theta i at all buses for all for all i is equal to 1 to n and from that we can calculate i i j uh, then magnitude of i i j and then P i j that is the line power flow Q i j and anything and everything injected power at all the other buses. In fact, those are already given injected reactive power at the buses where it is not given. That means, we can calculate anything and everything whatever I would like to know about the system. So, once we know these values that is this magnitude and angle at each and every bus with the help of we can essentially calculate anything and everything about the system. Now, suppose we want to monitor the system because uh, every time because uh, essentially on a power system the loading as well as the generation level in the system always changes periodically at least this I mean loading level changes periodically and to respond to that loading level. So, then obviously, this a generator generation pattern also changes. So, then therefore, because this loading level keeps on changing changing and as well as to keep track of that loading level as this particular generation level also keeps on changing. So, then so then therefore, the power flow over all the lines keeps on changing. Now, when it is keeping on changing, so when these power flows are keeping on changing, so then therefore, th there may be a chance that at some point of time the power flow over any any line or rather the we can say that this uh, magnitude of current flow over any line that may cross the limit. Now, if that crosses the limit, so then obviously, we have to take some corrective action. Please note that here in this case we are not even talking about any kind of contingency, we are not even talking about any kind of outage condition, we are simply talking about the steady state condition where no element has been outaged, all the elements are in action, they are, they are already in place. 
but because of the change in loading as well as the generation pattern the line power flow as well as the current flow over the existing lines they can keep on changing. So, then therefore, there can be a chance that at some point of time the power flow or current flow over any existing line that can go beyond its maximum limit. So, if it goes beyond the maximum limit, so then that particular line is in danger and if that condition persists for a long time, so then this line may be permanently damaged. So, then therefore, it will incur a huge cost to us. So, to prevent that possibility, we need to monitor the system on a continuous basis. Now, obviously, we at the first glance, we can say that well, if I know all these quantities, so then therefore, every time uh, or rather on a let us say continuous basis, we can keep on doing this power flow analysis and then once we do this power flow analysis from this, we can calculate all these quantities. So, then obviously, you would be able to keep track of the system continuously, but then unfortunately for doing this power flow analysis all these quantities are absolutely required. Even if any single quantity here is missing this power flow analysis cannot be done that is the first problem. Second problem is that we are here talking about that this injected power at all these buses for example, injected power at all this PV bus as well as the PQ bus and the voltage magnitude at the PV bus. Now, what happens that if I wish to do this calculation, this calculation should be done at some central computer station at some particular location. So, then therefore, to that location all this required data need to be given. Now, it may or may not be possible to install meters at all these points to always keep on measuring that what is the injected power at each and every bus. Suppose, I do have a simple uh, 3 bus system, simple 3 bus system and I wish to do a load flow analysis. So, I have a generator. So, this is my slag bus. So, here let us say I know it, I know it and this is a let us say um, this is a load bus, this is a load bus. So, this is bus 2, this is bus 3. So, this is uh, I have got P 3 and Q 3. In fact, their direction should be reversed. So, their direction should be reversed. So, I have got P 3 and Q 3 here also I have got P 2 and Q 2. So, then therefore, if I wish to do load flow analysis of this system, I need the values of P 3, Q 3, P 2, Q 2 and once I know this, I would be able to do this analysis. But possibly instead of now possibly instead of measuring all these quantities, probably it will be much easier as far as this analysis is concerned, especially if my let us say. Um, main server station or uh, main control center is located somewhere here near the generator. Possibly, it will be easier for us to measure the power flow over the line, measure the reactive power flow over the line and measure the magnitude of current flow over the line. So, then in that case what will happen? If my control center is located here. So, I do not have to really rely on these values which will have to be communicated to me, rather I would get these values at a local station. Of course, here we are simply taking a very, very elementary system just to point out the fact that sometimes or in or in let us say several occasions, it is much easier to measure the uh, line power flow as well as the current magnitude over the line. Now, basically so now, now actually what happens when we do a load flow analysis. Now, here in this system essentially there are 4 unknowns V 2, theta 2, V 3, theta 3. So, then therefore, in the so then therefore, to solve for these 4 unknowns we need 4 equations or rather 4 quantities. So, in the normal load flow analysis our known quantities are P 2, P 3, 
q2 q3. So, I have got 4 equations 4 unknown we solve. Now, if I wish to solve for this 4 unknowns, it is not always necessary that I should have only these 4 known quantities, I can have also some other quantities which are expressible in terms of these unknown quantities. And these quantities and let us out of these 4 uh, equations, 3 equations would be I would be getting from here. right? And then again also then possibly uh, suppose for example, that if I have the uh, means of, uh, with me that I can communicate uh, some data from this center to this center. Let us say that uh, this distance is 200 kilometer and let us say this distance is also 200 kilometer. So, then therefore, I would like to say for example, in this case that well I do have uh, the means to communicate some data from uh, this center to this center, but unfortunately my communication uh, network from bus 3 to bus 1 is not uh, still existing, I cannot really communicate that data over that, that long distance. So, then therefore, if I do not have that, so then therefore, I cannot really put a meter over here and then simply keep on sending what is the value of P 3 and Q 3 to do this calculation. Rather what I can do is that I can possibly measure these values, let us say uh, P 2 3 or Q 2 3 or whatever it is. So, then therefore, I can get 4 quantities from here, let us say any one quantities of from here and then I can possibly try to solve for it that is the one problem. So, then therefore, sometimes instead of this I am mean getting this injected values, sometimes or other in many occasions it is much more convenient to get some other measured values for the purpose for the purpose of analyzing the system. So, um, we stop here today. Uh, now and in the next lecture, we will also continue with this basic concept of this state estimation method. Thank you.